I'd like to call this City of Shelton Commission meeting uh, to order. And the first item on our business is a Commission Weekly Reports. And so I will give this meeting over to Commissioner Moore at this time. Okay. Uh, tomorrow afternoon I have a housing coalition meeting as well as an executive housing coalition meeting. On Wednesday I'll be attending an after hours for um, Hood Canal. Wait, is it Hood Canal Communication? Mm -hmm. It's United Way. Um, on Thursday, there is a candidate forum I will be attending. And on Friday, there is an event here uh, for staff that I will be attending. And that's it. All right, Commissioner McDowell. Um, Tuesday, I, Tuesday morning, I have my left board meeting, and I'm sure that most of you know what that is, but that is the uh, city and county that manages the medical bills for the um, law enforcement officers and firefighters. So that's tomorrow morning, bright and early. Wednesday, I have my have after hours, um, and Thursday, uh, candidates forum at 6 p.m. Y'all come. And Friday, my briefing with Ryan. Thank you. And uh, Tuesday, tomorrow, I will be attending my monthly MACECOM board meeting. Wednesday, I will also be going to the Chamber After Hours event. On Thursday, I will be attending my Economic Development Council monthly board meeting. And Friday is still kind of uh, up in the air. And so that completes our weekly commission reports. At this time, we will allow a general public comment. If you'd like to speak, you just need to sign in a card, and we would give you a three minutes to speak. So. The person we have is Tom Lowe. Oh, wow. Oh. You decided to go before you go. That's right. Yeah. Go ahead. He's more dynamic. I don't want to follow Tom. <laughs> Uh, hi everybody, Randy Lewis. Hope everyone had a safe and fun 4th of July. Over the 4th, I asked my neighbor's son, Public Works for the city of Sammamish, what a normal utility tax rate would be. He told me 6% is standard. If the city goes much above 6%, they can run into legal and ethical issues. I asked him if he had heard of a utility tax of 31%. He said no. So we're number one. Despite what has been asserted, the Mason County Utility Bill will not be the same as the City Bill, for example, the new 5% utility tax that will be listed on the bill. True, there will, be, there will be a number on the Mason County Garbage Invoice that will be the same as the base rate currently charged by the City, but the Mason County Garbage number is not the base rate. It is a pretend base rate. That is because 26% goes to the City Government. The true base rate is that 74% of Mason County Garbage has agreed to accept to cover its expenses to provide the garbage service, meet profit, reserve requirements, whatever else. This is why you privatize, to achieve the financial benefits of an entity with economies of scale to serve a function the entity has been expert at for many years. Did the city government then say, cool, we could pass on the savings to the garbage ratepayers? No, the city government has decided not only to not only not share all or even some of the privatization savings with the garbage rate Payers, but the city government is now is going to share none of the savings. They're going to take it all, every penny. Further, the city government is not just satisfied only with the 26%, it's tacking on another 5%. Having looked at the sewer spreadsheet used to justify those absurd rates, a spreadsheet I found to be flawed both in assumptions and methodology, a case might be made to lower sewer rates. However, if the city brings up the issue of lowering sewer rates, the question will be asked at that point, and trust me, the question will be asked, why don't you lower the garbage rates? Two, why isn't the city satisfied with lowering the garbage rates by roughly 20% by adding the standard 6% utility tax on the true Mason County garbage base rate? Surely 6% is more than enough to cover whatever incidental solid waste expenses the city has, will incur after it has little or no role in the garbage function. Does the city government really need a half a million dollars a year to book financial entities given it to it by Mason County Garbage and to shut off water for those who didn't pay their garbage bill? Unless you are planning to set up a dedicated garbage fund, as with the sewer, to cover such items as the C Street cleanup and the Mason County Garbage kickbacks are used for sewer expenses only, 
the Shelton government will have a difficult time justifying a 31% utility tax. Thank you. All right. I'm looking at this thing and I'm saying, gee whiz, he covered a lot of the points. I'll talk a little slower. <laughs> um, I had uh, just a few questions. You know, uh, one, again, I'm Tom Lowe, just a citizen, person that was uh, born here and care about, care about the citizens here in the city. And anyway, what I'd like to say is that the, the town isn't a rich town. I mean, you guys live here. Uh, and and uh, I see this as a, an opportunity, okay, uh, to to help out some of those citizens. Number one, uh, I just have a question, and you don't have to answer it now. But I'm wondering if there was ever a formal bid on this. Uh, I know that maybe people asked around, and the company, uh, as I looked at the company that actually got this bid, is is. Uh, a company called Waste Connections, huge company, by the way, owned Canada. <laughs> There's where the owners are. It bothered me to take a look at that. Number one, I could see no formal bid process, but you know what? I got, <laughs> I don't always see everything. And, uh, and it did bother me that it was a Canadian company. Number two, we, got, we sold our, our equipment for $700,000. Seems like you could put that in an account to take care of those little idiots, you know, shutting off water and maybe having hiring a staff. If we handle it right, we could have somebody there for years and years, couldn't we? Three, that million dollars really bothers me. I was a, I handled statewide programs and gosh, if somebody would have gave me that and I could pay it back over a two year period and I get the money from the ratepayers themselves because I didn't bring down the rates. It looks bad, doesn't it? They would have canned me, <laughs> I guarantee it. It doesn't, sweeten in the deal, if they said, it'll Seattle said, Tom, take care of you, I'm gonna sweeten the deal. Believe me when I tell you, <laughs> I would have been in bad trouble. Um, that 31% does get raggedy. Uh, somebody asked me, you know, hey, how much would you normally charge? I said about 6%. I worked with all the utility districts in the entire state. I was in charge of disaster operation. <laughs> and gosh, that looked bad. Sometimes it, it's, it, it, it's the look of it, right? And not what it really is. And that's what bothered me about this. And I know the people here are honest people, caring people. But I don't want you to get in a situation where it's going to look bad for you. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Olson. Uh, Mike Olson. I'll uh, change the subject a little bit. I have a few comments on the uh, <clears throat> proposed action on your uh, building permits and GFCs and stuff. I really like the idea presented by the staff on uh, zero permit costs for fixing up older homes and rehabbing properties. Um, I, I would caution you a little bit, though, as you move forward to study that, you know, try to differentiate between a developer coming in and an actual homeowner who wants to do this because I remember a few years ago when when we instituted GFCs in the, in the city and uh, one builder in particular came in and pulled 10 permits to save a, a substantial amount of money and then he sat on those for a couple of years before he actually developed them and I, you know I mean he took advantage of the, the loophole and it was all legit and everything but I'd hate to see that happen right now with, with the, the rental situation in our community, as everybody knows, is really tight right now. It's hard to find a rental, much less good rentals. And I think that by doing this with your fees that you're doing, or you know, proposing, there's a great idea, but, but I'd hate to see it taken advantage of by people with more money than a lot of the people in the community 
who, who are willing to fix up these older homes but may, may not have the capital a, as a larger builder would to come in and buy six or seven of them and then flip them for pure profit. So, you know, I'd like to see that tweaked a little bit. And <clears throat> the other part of it is that uh, as you go about changing these things to be really cautious as you see what's happening at the county right now, you know, this is, the real estate market is great. It's the best it's been in 10 years. But we know that it's not going to last, and, and I'd hate for us to give away everything too quickly and then down the road, uh, as we've seen, be bitten by things. Your own uh, uh, financial director has already cautioned you on potential raise, uh, rate increases in the water utilities because of your actions. So, um, again, just take it slow and, and uh, really think it through. You can see some of the blowback we're getting from the garbage situation because I don't believe it was, you know, really done casually and slowly. It was kind of just really rushed through it in a sense. So um, I like the idea. Uh, I think you should do it quick as far as the, uh, the rental side of things to get these older homes rehabbed. Uh, do that right away. The rest of it, you know, let's, let's look at it and, you know, and take our time with it. Thanks. Thank you. Marilyn Vogler. Carolyn Vogler, 420 East Poplar. I, too, want to speak about building permit fees. I think that to look at how much we might lose in one year or two years is a short-sighted view of city finance. And so when I hope you consider what has been lost due to this decrease, that you're also taking into account the increase in assessed value of property in the city because it's on this assessed value that our revenue as a tax base is formed. And I'd like to see that number when you reach a final discussion. I highly favor the zero or very low permit fees for infill and vacant foreclosed properties. Um, I have a personal experience to share with you because these properties too seriously impact city revenue. When I purchased my home in 2011, the assessed value of the improvements, not the land, just the home, was $108,400. In 2015, four years later, the assessed value of improvements was $57,600. Now, I had put in $10,000 worth of wiring and a new paint job, so it wasn't my house. When I asked the assessor what the problem was, she said, neighborhood. And I realized that there were six vacant foreclosed homes within a two block radius of my house. And that's why my assessed value went down. To put it in money figures, my taxes went from a high of $1,900 a year to $1,386, which is a drop of a little over $500. This is real dollars lost to the city because of vacant foreclosed homes. And so two things when you consider fee structure. I seriously hope you will maintain the lowered fee structure. I think the building and remodeling we've seen is due at least in some measure to this. And I favor the zero fees for infill and vacant homes, but rather than a list of eligible properties, I hope you will make this available to any building that has been vacant for six months or more if what is proposed will add to the assessed value of that building. Thank you. Thank you. Eric, we are not taking comments on item D1. We will take comments on that next week. However, if you have a general public comment you'd like to make, we could take that today. You can talk about it under the general public comment. I just wanted to say, in case everybody forgot, that that frivolous lawsuit was filed after it was publicly known that the city had entered into an agreed order with Waste Action Project. And I think it's disgusting that out-of-towners are going to make our taxpayers pay $60,000 I think that's all they wanted to begin with. I wouldn't pay it. All right. Thank you for your comment. Is that it? 
that's it. All right. Moving now on to item D, which is our business agenda today, is the C Street Landfill Consent Decree. And our city manager, Ryan Wheaton, will talk to us about that. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. We're discussing something that we've talked about uh, for the last few years. This is a complaint that was brought against us through or by the Waste Action Project. And in conjunction with that, we also have a, an agreed order with the Washington State Department of Ecology that will be touched on here. This is the end of the uh, last few months. We've been pretty heavy negotiations with Waste, that waste Action Project to finalize this consent decree. So what is presented to you today is the same as we heard in our last executive session where we discussed uh, litigation. So the <coughs> main points here are a $60,000 uh, fee that will go to pay for attorney's fees through the Waste Action Project, $5,000 that will go to an agreed upon supplemental environmental project, which you also see in your packet is Mason Conservation District and a project that they're doing at Goldsboro. We also have to agree that we'll make available to the public some documents that they've identified and any ongoing documents that have to do with the cleanup. And then also we agreed that we would follow through and comply with the agreed upon order with State Ecology, which is something we didn't have a problem with before. What we're asking for today is that you move this ahead to the action agenda for next week. And if you have any questions about anything that's in this, we can answer that now. <clears throat> any questions or comments? I, I don't have. I'm uh, eager to get this finished. No comment. Okay. Um, but eager. Yeah. yeah. What I'm, I'm going to I'm going to say is that yeah, I I very much hate to pay this kind of money for something mm -hmm. that the city of Shelton has in, we are the ones that brought attention to this. We're the ones that made the contact department of ecology and wanted to clean this uh, C Street landfill dump up. We, we stepped forward and did that. And yes, this lawsuit did come after it. Here's where we are as a city. We have what you call legal advice. We have lawyers. And in this world of uh, politics and business, um, if you're looking for fair, fair doesn't always enter into it. We were advised by our lawyers. Our lawyers negotiated this, and I want to get it behind us. Uh, my gut feeling is pay them nothing, the scoundrels. But guess what? With this um, political climate, the legal the advice of a lawyer, we generally 99.9% .9 follow the advice of the lawyers, and in this case, this was our best deal we could do to get this issue behind us. And I say, let's get on and clean up the C Street landfill and put this behind us. Um, and so that is why we made, I made the decision, is to follow the advice of our lawyers, and I think it is the right decision. So that's my comment on that. So at this time, you're looking, and it appears that we concur to place this on the action agenda for July 17, 2017. Thank you very much. Next is our administration reports. This is a city commission study session, and the first person to speak will be our assistant city manager, Vicki Look. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, just a little bit today, I just wanted to um, announce that we have two positions open, uh, one with Public Works and one in the Police Department, and we have extended the opening for those two positions to the, to the end of this week. So. Uh, we hope to get a lot of really fine applicants and uh, continue on with the project or the position fillings and get those done as, as quickly as possible. I wanted to remind everyone, too, that we do have uh, special events going on in the month of July. And uh, we have the Bite of Mason County, which is the July 20th, which I hear was a lot of fun in the downtown area last year. So looking forward to get good weather and a, a good attendance at that. Um, July 29th, we have a, an event that is Show Off Your Ride, and that is down there um, between Grove and, and Front Street, and uh, it's a mini car show, and, and folks like to attend that, and it's usually well attended. Flea Market is happening on July 23rd. That's become a monthly event, and I know that, that they have a lot of vendors that go out there, and they're 
selling flea market items, and I noticed a lot of people walking around this last um, weekend, and then also it'll Excuse be on the 23rd. Where, where is that one located, the flea market? It's, um, it's between uh, Railroad and Franklin, or no, Railroad and uh, Coda. Well, on 4th right, Street. Yeah, yeah they've yeah. extended down to Grove Street before. Oh, when okay, a lot, um, so. when they have yeah. a lot of folks yeah. coming in so Thank that's you. uh and the farmer's market is on saturdays as well so music in this park i think starts up this thursday uh, uh, so i thought they've already had the first thursday. one yeah. okay yep so i just wanted to remind everybody that we have a lot of good stuff happening uh special events in the city and then the last thing i saved for the best is uh, i wanted to introduce jamie Og. she is here as our city clerk and i knew her mom <laughs> i knew her mom and dad hi jamie there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, like anyway, she's she's here, and we're uh, getting her used to all the all the processes and everything like that. So she will, uh, you know, be learning in the background for a little while, and then when she's ready, we'll we'll set her up and have her take the the reins of the city clerk's position. So, welcome. Thank you. That's all I That's have. That's it. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. And next is uh, Craig Gregory, our Public Works Director. Thanks, Mayor. Commissioners, uh, just a brief update today. Uh, we've got a slight change to 7th and Railroad coming uh, in the next uh, week or so. That intersection has been configured to be a split phase uh, where each individual leg goes uh, individually. And we have seen that the wait times have been a little excessive down there, so we are reconfiguring the 7th Street leg north-south um, to work in conjunction with each other and then we will leave uh, railroad at this time as a split phase uh, as an individual uh, movement so you'll see that in the next week or so and the storm extension on Laurel Street from I to K uh, will get underway uh, in the next month or so We've still got some TIB uh, road work, grant road work uh, to be done. So you will see some work being done on Railroad Avenue between 9th and 12th and also Olympic Highway North uh, from K Street in the southbound lane for about a half a block. So uh, you'll see some grinding and some asphalt going on uh, out there. Engineering staff uh, had, continues to work on Basin 3 and getting uh, that to a place where we can go to bid uh, later this fall. And in preparation for the TIB grant that we will be submitting to uh, the Transportation Improvement Board in August, we are going to have their engineer out to take a look at uh, the project and walk through it with them um, just to try and sell uh, our project above any of the rest that may be in our region. And then the final thing that I have is we have talked about Mason County garbage. We did see a fairly seamless transition um, from city picking up that garbage over the last week uh, to Mason County garbage and haven't heard of too many complaints as far as service goes. So um, that transition seemed to be fairly seamless, so that was good news for everybody. That's all I have today. I had a okay. question about the, um, the changes to 7th and Railroad. Is that just the light timing? Is, is that all we're looking at? No, it will actually be, we're going to actually develop or put in a designated left turn lane on uh, 7th Street both north and south and then you'll have a straight right turn so basically the traffic trying to move through that intersection will not have to stop if there's oncoming traffic but it will go at the same time and then 7th street will continue to go uh, individually um, after that so it should cut the wait times down by about 30 to 45 seconds so you're not going to change the timing of the lights any we are not. We tried to change the timing of the lights uh, and decrease them for from 30 seconds down to 20, and it just didn't seem to work. We let it function for about a day or so um, in that mode, and it just didn't seem to work uh, with that short of a phase. So we will leave it at 30 seconds, but it should cut that wait time down as much as everybody says that they wait at that intersection for five minutes. It's 
The longest you could ever wait there is two minutes, but mm. uh, seems like five. We'll That's cut it down. It's a long time when you're in. It a is a long time. So we're going to try and cut it down to the most you would wait is about 90 seconds. So okay. um, we're hoping that'll work and and fix the issue we've got down there. So, so you'll see a little additional striping uh, and then a change to the actual signal head. So we're not going to be losing any of the parking along 7th Street there? You will, we will be just extending the yellow line from the alley uh, heading south on the east side of 7th Street, so next to Yurako Coffee. Mm -hmm. But it, all it does is shorten the length, but you can still get three cars in there. It'll be about 63 feet, so each stall will have about 21 feet. Okay. Our average stall length. Uh, in town is around 20 feet, so we still should be able to get three cars in there okay. um, as long as they park appropriately. Okay. So, but it'll just shorten it up just a touch by and, about eight feet or so. And no changes to the west side? No changes to the west okay, side. Good. Okay, good. We did initially contact uh, off the wall mm -hmm. uh, and let them know that we may be taking one of their stalls. Uh, that will not be the case. We found a way to get it in there and not affect their parking on that side of the road, so that was good. Good. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I had a question about the Jersey barriers on Olympic Highway North. Um, and, and is the plan when we redo that that those are removed? Is, did I hear that? Or because aren't we, we've got a grant to work on that street up there? We do not have a grant at this point. Right. Um, if we move forward and actually get awarded a grant uh, in November, there could be a possibility that that would be the proposal to remove those Jersey barriers and just go to a stand up curb. Uh, as we have uh, on Olympic Highway South, North Cliff, um, most of the other areas in town. So that would be the thought to increase aesthetics up there um, mm -hmm. and, and make that more appealing to get rid of those Jersey barriers. So. Yeah, I was driving up the street and the first thing I thought, well, those are kind of ugly. It'd be nice to lose them. And then I got thinking of all the curves and people walk and I kind of thought, hmm, you know, I just kind of thought the safety element kind of kicked into my brain a little bit. And so that curb would only just be like your regular 80-inch curb or so, or would there be another foot or two, something, so? It would probably just be a standard curb, but that is something that we well, will have traffic engineers take a look at. Um, we are looking at some traffic calming, too, to try and slow that traffic down a little mm -hmm. bit and maybe uh, widen those lanes slightly so you're not quite so close to that uh, sidewalk also. So. We're going to look at every different option. We sure. haven't come up with anything yet, but uh, every well, option. We are going to get be. the grant, right? We are come keeping on. our fingers crossed. Be positive. That is why we are having the uh, TIB engineer mm -hmm. come out to try to sell him on our project. So yeah. that'll be great on Friday. All right. That concludes my questions. Any other questions for Craig? Mm -mm. All right. Nola, you're next. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, just three things on today's finance report. Uh, first, regarding the solid waste transition to Mason County garbage, uh, there was the handing off of the trucks and there was also the handing off of the billing side of it. And I've, I've asked two of our Timula members to come today and that's Bobby Smith and Kim Kilmer. And Bobby handles all of our utility billings. And Kim does a lot of work helping her and a lot of the rest of us with a variety of things in finance. But Bobby really has spearheaded the, the billing side of that transition, and it has gone very smoothly. She's put a lot of hours into it and has worked very closely with the staff at Mason County Garbage to make sure that the billing side of that transition has gone very well. And she also happens to be celebrating 10 years of service with the city of Shelton as of today. All right. Yeah. Yeah. She's, uh, we're glad she's here and she's done a lot of great work and we appreciate all the efforts that she's put into this transition and we also appreciate Kim's work on it too. She's done a lot of things to help make the transition go really well and we're grateful for the work that they've both done. Um, so that's, that's gone really good. Uh, as far as the gap to cash conversion, that is now officially complete. Uh, I wrapped that up last week. There was 5,140 adjusting journal entries that totaled over $31 million. The conversion went very smoothly and it did balance to the penny. So that is now done. We are now officially on a cash basis. And the next step in uh, bringing everything current is to um, bring our bank account reconciliations into our financial software. And I'm working with 
another one of our staff members on the finance team, uh, Elaine Murka, she's helping with the bank reconciliations. And uh, so we're in the process of getting those current and, and incorporated into the software. So we have a more complete financial picture. Uh, once that's done, then we can begin to generate some monthly and annual financial reports. So that's coming very soon. We're moving along. Speaking of uh, finance reports, I have been looking at some interim numbers year to date uh, for the city to see how the finances look um, and comparing our revenue and expenditures actual to our 2017 budget. And I am happy to report that we have a very stable revenue and expenditure pattern right now, and it's hovering very close to that 50% mark. With the year 50% done as of the end of June, our revenue and our expenditures are hovering very close to that mark overall. So it's very stable, looks very good. That's all I have. Any questions? No, good job. Good job. Did report. you say 31 million and it came out to the penny? It was 31 million and some change and it oh did come gosh. out to penny. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Good, good job. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that completes that part of it. And now we're, our city manager is going to talk to us about a few other items. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. A few things, updates on questions you had in the past. First one, there's some, been some discussion amongst the three of you about sewer rates. And last week, Craig Nola and I contacted the firm that did the last sewer rate model and got an estimate on what it would cost to do an update of that model. So. We're likely to bring that forward soon. That wouldn't take too long to turn around, but we want to provide up-to-date information. I know it's been probably two or three years since we worked with that group, the F FCS group, but we want to make sure that we give them uh, correct assumptions as of now about future infrastructure. And then also, as soon as NOLA is up-to-date with 2017 finances, they'll be able to plug those, inf those pieces of information in as well. So. That'll be both for sewer and water likely, and we'll talk more about that as it moves forward. Second one, I think since February or so, I've been giving you roughly monthly updates on the discussion with Simpson about obtaining the railroad. I have been unable to get an answer out of Simpson for the last few months, and considering that it's my time, but also an attorney's time that we're paying, I am trying to figure out if you would like me to proceed with that, because at this point, we're not getting any answer from Simpson about who owns the railroad or what their decision is gonna be moving forward. Well, uh, I would, they know where we are. They've got our number. I don't see advancing, you know, putting too much more time into it. I don't know anyone else they're selling it to. So I, I mean, I don't, I think we probably just have to wait for them to call us back. Okay. I would say wait. I think that, um, yeah, I think that negotiations are going on outside of the city, and so um, I would say just wait and see if they, we hear from them. Yeah. I don't anticipate we will. But. Okay. Last thing, I think two or three weeks ago, Commissioner Moore asked about council form of government. So today we're able to finalize some information with uh, our attorney. She was looking into, she did some legal research, and I will say, a little bit more difficult to answer than I originally thought when I told you I'd bring back some information because it's been a while since anybody shifted from a commission form of government to anything else. And as she's learned, as she looked up the requirements that commission forms of government have, uh, those piece of legislation have not been updated for a while, so we're a little bit on our own. So what you have in front of you are two main questions that she tried to answer. The first one is, what are the options? And the second one below that line is, what can be done if you decide or the people of Shelton decide to move forward? So first, there are two options that she strongly suggested choosing between. One would be council manager. The other one is a mayor council. At the top of the sheet, you'll see that uh, Municipal Research Services Center, M MRSC, put together, this is on their website and available, just a description of the two. And then below that, you can see what a change to one of those two would mean for the current commission. Below the line answers the question of what would be the next step if anybody chose to move that direction. One, she made it very clear that because of the current form of government, that commission cannot choose to change its form of government. 
the two options would be that you three can choose to put forward a ballot measure or that a citizen position, petition can be put forward to the county auditor and that would have to be, either of those would have to be done 84 days before the election. So November election would mean that it's done mid-August and then a special election in either February or April could be worked on or even the uh, next primary, which would be a year from next month. So those are the key points that she pointed out. There are some more nuanced answers that would take a little bit of time, but th that's the general information that we were able to get in the last couple of weeks. All right, thank you very much. So I, I, um, so we don't have a lot of time if we're going to try to get this on the ballot and let the citizens decide. Either way, whether the three of you, if you chose to do something or a citizen peti petition is put forward, either one of those would have to be done essentially by August 15th in order to get on to a November ballot. Okay, okay. Um, are the two of you willing to um, possibly adopt a resolution to put it on the November ballot? I think we could vote right now. I'd accept a motion uh, to, uh, at this time, not put it on the ballot. I will make the motion that we do put it on the ballot. Okay. Go ahead. I think I'm going to leave. No. Go, go, go ahead. Make, I, I make just, the motion. I just made the motion. Okay. Um, I, do I need well, to? Can I step in just well, really, absolutely. really quickly? In order for you to vote on it, we'd need a resolution. So if that's the direction, we'd have to bring one back next week Please to have do. it formally. Okay. Yes. If you direct us to do that, we can do that, but we don't have a resolution. Okay, no. oh, okay. I see what you I mean. I do feel okay. a little uncomfortable that this is a campaign issue at the moment, and uh, so legally, I think we have to watch what we do and say in this, because there has been some campaign activity about this issue, so to me, I don't care, I'm just one vote here, so I think we want to make sure that we are I'm with operating. I'm resolution, I don't feel comfortable doing that right now. Correctly, and what we're doing. Yes, please do. Yes, I would, um, I would also agree that we do do a resolution. All right. Does that conclude our reports? That's all I have. Thank you very much. Our next meeting will be July 17th at 6 p.m. in the evening. July 17th at 6 p.m.